Welcome. Come and be well. This is Jesus' invitation for us today. We welcome you. We thank you for taking a few minutes to watch this worship video for Sunday, April 26, 2020, the third Sunday of Easter. And as much as you are watching, we hope that it is more than a video. We hope that somehow, somewhere, this becomes worship for you, and you in these moments have an encounter with the living God. So we thank you for joining us. We also want to say thank you to so many of you who expressed your appreciation, your encouragement for what we're trying to do during this unusual time. Again today, we thank our great crew of Jim Emmert and Lauren Blom on sound and camera, their best boy, key grip, gaffers, and whatever else you need to put a video production together, they do it, and we thank them. We thank Chris DeWild and Jesse Voss on the music, and then Katie Alley and Pastor Sophie and me here in the worship time. Also, just to let you know, we try our best to practice safe distancing while we're filming. Another just quick word, remember if you are looking for announcements, we send out an email on Monday, more, Monday afternoon. Look for that, and if you don't get it and would like to, contact the church and we'll be happy to put you on the list. But now, let's prepare to worship God in this Easter season. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. We come today to worship God because God is near and listens to us. We come today to praise God because the Holy One is a liberating God. We come today with confidence because whatever happens in life, our listening and attentive God is always bending down to hear our cries. Beloved in the Lord, if we say we have no sin, then we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sin, God is merciful and just and receives all who come with humble hearts. So let us pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
hear these words of assurance? Though your sins be like scarlet, they will be as bright as snow. Though they be like crimson, they will be washed like lamb's wool. Beloved, in the name of Jesus Christ, I declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sin. And then as forgiven people, hear how we are called to live. As the prophet Micah said, Hear, O people, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you? To do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. Amen. Children, this time is for you. Our scripture lesson today is going to tell us about a few friends who were taking a walk. I imagine many of you and your families are out taking walks right now while we're at home and there's not a whole lot to do. One thing that these friends noticed on their walk was that another friend joined them. Now, right now, we can't always have new people joining on our walks, but they did. And as they kept walking, they didn't know who it was that was walking with them. Later, they learned it was Jesus. But this story makes me think that sometimes when we're out and about, and we're walking around and we're passing strangers or new friends, sometimes we don't really expect to see or meet Jesus. But Jesus is in the faces of all of the people we meet. Maybe they're people we know really well, or maybe they're strangers to us. But if we have eyes to see it, we're going to encounter Jesus all around us, even in these sort of strange and maybe scary times. Jesus is with us, and as we continue to meet one another, we are gonna to continue to meet Jesus on the road. Let's say a prayer together, and then we'll receive our blessing. Loving God, thank you for meeting us wherever we are. Whether we're out on the road walking, or playing, or learning at home, thank you for being with us. Give us eyes to see you in the faces of all the people we meet, even if it seems unexpected. Thank you for loving us. In Jesus' name, amen. And now let's receive our blessing. You are God's beloved child. With you, God is well pleased. Our scripture reading today comes to us from the 24th chapter of the Gospel of Luke, commonly known as the story of the walk to Emmaus. So listen now for the word of God. Now on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in all of Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place in these days? Jesus asked them, what things? They replied, the things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. 
but we had hoped he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and beside all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some of our women of the group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find the body there, they came back and told us they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it, just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then Jesus said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets declared. Was it not necessary for the Messiah to suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all of the prophets, he interpreted to them all the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near to the village to which they were going, Jesus walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us. It is almost evening, and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. And when he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to them. And they recognized him. And then he vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened to them on the road, and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. Thanks be to God for this, his holy word.
during these COVID days, when I'm driving into town, perhaps to go to church or to the post office or to run another errand, apart from the mostly empty streets, the one sight that I see quite often is the sight of people walking together or alone along the sidewalks on Broadway and Main Street. And I'm transported back to a retreat that I attended decades ago. During that retreat, the leader asked us to go on an Emmaus walk. Emmaus walk? What's an Emmaus walk, I thought. Well, he explained, I want you to find a partner, perhaps someone you know or someone you don't know. And I want you to walk somewhere for at least an hour together. Walk in silence if you wish, or you can talk, whatever you want. See if you might find that Christ is walking with you during that time. I've never forgotten that. And now whenever I see two people walking side by side on the sidewalk or on a path, even at an acceptable six foot distance, I immediately think back to that Emmaus walk. The story that we heard this morning is a favorite post-Easter story. Two relatively unknown disciples, one of whom is called Cleopas, are walking from Jerusalem to Emmaus about seven miles away, a long enough walk to have a deep and meaningful conversation. During that walk, a stranger comes along and walks with them and shares in the conversation. Now, most sermons that I've heard on this passage focus on the end of the story, after the walk, when the stranger was persuaded to stay at their house and eat a meal with them. But today, I want to focus on the walk itself as an important way for us, perhaps, to cope with these COVID days. Did you know that Christians were originally called followers of the way? The Christian life was seen as similar to walking on a certain path, or perhaps also traveling together. In this way of thinking, faith is as much a physical act, something you do with your body, as it is a mental one, something you do with your mind. Faith is about your habits, your commitments, about what you do every day, who you hang out with, as much as it is about what you profess or think. My friend and colleague in upstate New York, Leroy Cease, was an avid walker. He and his friend Greg walked every single Adirondack peak over the years on their days off together. Leroy walked every morning before sunrise as part of his spiritual practice. One day, Leroy fell off a ladder and shattered his heel. For months, he was in a cast, and walking was impossible. At our monthly pastor's lunch, he complained that not being able to walk was really impinging on his ability to pray. Now, I was a young and probably too brash pastor at the time, and I said to him, sort of jokingly, Leroy, maybe God wants to teach you a new way to pray. He looked at me with a smirk, but his eyes had daggers in them. Needless to say, walking and praying are connected, closely linked for some of us. Two people who are walking together is a good time to share joy and pain, hope and bewilderment. And I suspect in these COVID days, 
that that's a lot of what's going on. We are privileged to live in a place where the population density is such that two people can walk in many places and still keep an appropriate distance necessary for everyone to stay safe. We hear a lot about social distancing these days. What we really mean is physical distancing. But perhaps in these times of physical distance, we can also find a kind of spiritual and social connection with one another. Someone once told me that the best conversations she had with her teenagers was when she was driving and they were riding in the front seat of the car with her. Somehow the fact that they were both facing forward rather than looking at each other allowed for more intimacy, allowed her children to tell her things that they might not have ventured to say face to face. I wonder if that might be true of a walking companion too. Can we share our hearts, our thoughts, our joys, our fears more easily, trusting that the one who is walking next to us will hold all of these without judgment? Walking is good for you, both for your health physically and for your health emotionally and mentally. And we are people who have often lost the art of walking places. It's easier, quicker, and more convenient to simply hop into the car. The other day, though, I came across this quote by Soren Kierkegaard, the Danish philosopher and theologian. He wrote, above all, do not lose your desire to walk. Every day, I walk myself into a state of well-being. I have walked myself into my best thoughts, and I know of no thought so burdensome that one cannot walk away from it. So I encourage you in these COVID days to walk, whether it's a long, or a short walk, whether it's outside or inside if necessary. I know that not all of you are able to walk. Perhaps your living facility has confined you or your health keeps you from walking very far at all. Perhaps you have to only walk in your imagination or drive in your car or scooter. But look and listen around you to everything. Trees that are leafing out, birds that are singing, flowers that are blooming, people who are walking and talking. Look and listen also with the eyes of your heart. Use the time you're walking to pray for the households that you pass the businesses that you go by, the people you encounter, perhaps for yourself and your loved one, for strangers, and if possible, encourage, ask someone to be your companion so that it may really be an Emmaus walk, two people side by side talking about the things that have been happening these days. Who knows? But you may find that your hearts are burning within you and that Jesus is walking by your side. Even though, like those early disciples, your eyes may be kept from recognizing him. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved, God speaks and invites us to respond. So I invite you now to stand, if you are able, and to join the church throughout the centuries to say what we believe, today using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. 
I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. It's time now to talk to you about stewardship and the offering of our gifts. During this time when we've been confined and far away from each other, so many of you have been so generous, thinking about the ministry of the church, and the need of our neighbors. And I want to say thank you for that. And do ask that you continue to remember the church and other ministries in your giving. Let us pray together. Lord, we offer ourselves now to you. Our hands, our feet, our hearts, but also all of our substance. For we know that they are gifts from you and what you have given us, we return a portion to you. Thank you. In Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. Let us turn our hearts to God in prayer. God of grace, the days are strange and hard right now, and at the same time, they feel simple we are feeling so many things, tenderness, fear, hope, boredom, delight, and grief. It's so much to hold. Thank you for being with us, for holding all of our feelings with us, for being present to all of our joys and fears. You are good. Today, we pray for those who are lonely, for those who are in homes by themselves, nursing homes with no visitors, and those who, though surrounded by many, feel overlooked or forgotten. May your presence be their peace, and would you provide for them friendly phone calls and letters in the mail to remind them they are loved and remembered. We pray for those who do not have the privilege of working from home. Hourly workers, medical professionals, grocery store workers, public servants, and many others. May their rest be refreshing, and may they know their work does not go unnoticed. Provide for them through the generosity of others and overwhelm them with your peace. We also pray today for those who are sick, those whose bodies are in chaos, and those who are struggling mentally. Would you bring order to the chaos and peace to the restless? Would you give us creativity in our hospitality that we might love and care for all those who are suffering with gentleness and joy? We remember today all those who are walking many different roads. It is easy to forget that it is on the road that you meet us. Give us eyes to recognize you in the faces of all those we meet. When we grow weary of walking, give us strength to take another step and surround us with folks who cheer us on. And when we feel strong, May we be the ones who encourage those around us. We pray all of these things in the strong name of Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. 
For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And now may God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, shine in your hearts, to give you the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Go in peace, to love and to serve the Lord. Amen.